Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, a couple weeks ago, almost three weeks ago now, I went to Mermet Springs. I try to go there at least once or twice over the winter, uh, which is when I generally go there. Uh, it's a great place. They're open all year long. Um, they keep the grounds uh, very clean and tidy. Uh, it's a full service. Um, diving destination. They have air, um, rental gear, nitrox, um, O2 for, uh, for deco bottles, custom blending and all that. Um, they also have a campground electric only, which is very convenient because I like taking my truck and camper. Um, it's a lot of fun to stay on grounds and very convenient. Um, the grounds, like I said, are kept up really well. Uh, they have a lot of these structures um, already set up um, with benches and tables and uh, everything's um, designed to make your life a lot easier when gearing up. Um, they also have a bathhouse with bathrooms uh, and showers. It is kept warm and um, running all year long with hot water, which makes it very convenient uh, because if you spend the weekend there, um, at least I know I like to take a shower every night, so it's nice that they keep it uh, keep it nice and warm and going all, all year long. Um, this is the other side um, of the bathhouse and then a few more of the overheads uh, with all the seating and benches and stuff. Um, the nice thing about Mermet is that they have everything roped off. Um, you can get these slates uh, from them for a few bucks, like five or six bucks. Or uh, you can just kind of um, memorize a few of the destinations here and kind of work your way through. The lines have markers on them anyway uh, that uh, let you know uh, where the line leads. So you don't necessarily need those slates, but they are convenient. Um, what else about Mermets? Um, Mermets in Southern Illinois, it is, um, I'm going to butcher the town, but I believe it's pronounced Belknap, B-E-L-K Nap, Belknap, uh, Illinois. It's about 15 minutes northwest of Metropolis. Um, <clears throat> not sure if, uh, you've ever heard of Metropolis, Illinois, uh, but they actually have a like 20, 25 foot statue of Superman in a giant gift shop if you're into that stuff. Um, pretty, pretty interesting little town. Uh, you can visit while you're down here if uh, you know the family's with or whatever, or you have non-divers. Just one more thing to do. Um, like I said, the, the entire quarry uh, has um, is roped off or it has ropes leading to uh, all the attractions. They have these nice little plaques, placards uh, indicating uh, where the ropes lead to. Uh, so it's really hard to get lost. If you know the general layout, um, you can find your way back um, without having to surface if you get turned around. Now there's pros and cons to that. Uh, I think People who go to Mermet really don't have to work on navigation, which, um, in my opinion, is something that they should try to work on on every dive. But I guess following the ropes is uh, is a form of navigation. Right? So anyway, enough of that. There's a plaque that, uh, if you read it, it probably said ambulance because the line leads to the ambulance. Um, this area is pretty cool. It's about about 45 50 feet deep here um, right around here is a, uh, a semi truck and a um, an old fire truck really cool things to see down there um, here we're just kind of working our way through this section of, uh, of the quarry uh, it's kind of like the middle middle section I guess uh, around uh, 40 to 60 feet. Um, it is full of uh, pretty cool things to visit. Uh, the fire truck uh, is right next to this. There's a semi truck, uh, like a flat nose semi truck. 
There's a train cart and a um, like a torpedo of some kind. I'm not really sure if it was real or a replica. I'm assuming it's a replica. Uh, and then the uh, the airplane, which is like the main attraction to this quarry, is uh, just the west of, uh, of the ambulance and and the uh, the train car along the south wall of the quarry. Um, the airplane sits kind of at an angle, or not at a kind of, it's like at a 45 degree angle. The um, cockpit is in about 50, 55 feet of water, and the tail is at about uh, 15 or so, um, resting pretty much on that south wall. Um, really cool, it's all gutted out, you can, uh, swim inside of um, the, uh, the main, uh, what would be the main sitting area or the passenger area. Um, the cockpit is, um, I think if there's like rebar uh, where the door would no normally be, but you can peek in the windows, which are all gone, and, and through the doorway and see uh, most of the controls, or at least the. Um, the skeleton of the controls uh, that's still there. Uh, there's a backstory to the airplane. Most people already know it. It was uh, used in the, the filming of U.S. Marshals, um, and uh, Glenn uh, was able to acquire it for uh, the low, low price of a dollar. Uh, I think it cost him uh, probably like ten thousand dollars to move it there, but. Um, He's more than happy to tell you the story if you ask him, um, as well as uh, the backstory to the train car. Um, it actually derailed uh, right there by the property um, when he was uh, first starting the business. So another another great story that uh, he would be more than happy to, to talk about. Um, so back to the quarry itself. Like I said, there's three. Uh, main areas or, or main depths. Um, the shallow end uh, is pretty much all along the east side of the quarry. Um, it is about 20, 20 feet to the platforms. Um, if you're going on to like the platforms two and three, it's that that drops down to about 40 feet or so, I think platform two does, and then platform three drops to about 70 feet. Um, because that's kind of at the edge of the deep side. Uh, but platform one, um, I believe, is, is right by where the 20-foot section starts along the, uh, the, the east wall. Um, and if you head south from there, it's pretty much 15, 20 feet. Uh, until you hit the south wall and then everything starts to drop off to I would consider the middle section uh, which is around you know 45 to 50 feet or so um, 60 feet something like that um, it does start to drop off to around 70 70 75 feet or so when you get closer to the uh, to the deep wall uh, the far, the farther north you head from there um, but um, it's it's pretty obvious when you start reaching that area. Um, most people spend most of their time uh, in the middle section. That's kind of where all the, the attractions are. Um, that's where everything's roped off. I think uh, uh, that's really the only only area the the shallow side and the middle side are the only areas that are roped off to my knowledge. I've been to the deep side a handful of times. It's pretty much a platform uh, at 80 feet, another platform at about 105, 110 feet, and um, there is a um, like a truck bed, like a small truck bed um, kind of like a one one that would dump dirt off from like a um, you know like a Home Depot or something. Uh, not very big. It's kind of hard to find. Uh, and um, 
Uh, not that much of an attraction, but something to look at. And that's pretty much all I've seen over there by the platforms. I have worked my way along the wall uh, towards the south end of, um, of, the, uh, of the quarry. Ran into a boat or two. I think that I have video of that as well. Uh, like from last year, last November, something like that. A um, little bit of a scavenger hunt. Again, there's no rope. You just kind of follow the wall. Take a they can know to your compass and uh, work your way down. Um, here's that train car I was talking about. Um, it really did derail. It is beat to hell. It's deformed. There's a giant hole on the bottom that I think I swim through. Yeah, that's me going through it now. Um, interesting, nonetheless. Pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty much fully intact besides the uh, giant holes uh, but still uh, interesting to check out um, I think here we're headed towards the boathouse the boathouse is uh, this pretty new attraction they sunk it last uh, when was I there late fall maybe late fall or maybe December, I don't remember. Um, they were getting it ready. We were the only ones there. Uh, so they they pretty much spend a lot of the winter kind of redoing things and um, working on projects and so on. And that's what they were working on. Um, they think they s went and sunk it like the week after we left. Uh, but it's, it's pretty cool. One more thing to look at. There didn't used to be anything in that area. So it's Kind of fun to have something there now to work uh, work towards and on your way back. Uh, this is working our way uh, towards the east wall again, towards the shallow end. Um, let's see. Besides the attractions, on uh, there's some of those plaques and lines I was telling you about. Um, like I like I said, makes navigation a breeze. Um, beside the you know, everything they sunk there, which is quite a bit along the shallow and middle side. Uh, they also uh, stock the quarry with fish. Um, uh, there's a lot of fish here. Um, surprisingly, I didn't see too many this time around, uh, except for some paddlefish, which I had uh, not been lucky enough to find um, on a regular basis until this, this dive. Um, kind of elusive um, and they they tend to stick to the deep side or uh, the deep um, like the far west wall which nobody really goes to too often um, but occasionally you will run into one um, we ran into several of them on this side actually um, we'll get there in a minute a few minutes well there's that uh, that torpedo um, Contraption I mentioned earlier. I don't think this thing was ever functioning, but I don't really know. It might have been a uh, some kind of replica or something someone built, or maybe repurposed. I don't know. But pretty cool, nonetheless. And there's no line going to it. You just have to kind of know where it's at, or you have to be there on a on a day with good visibility. Speaking of visibility, uh, I don't think it would be fair if I didn't mention that um, Mermet Springs suffers in the area of good visibility. Um, they do have good vis on the deeper side, or on the um, as well as the uh, the middle side on the deeper end of the middle side. Um, but it's uh, good visibility is a relative term. Um, as you can see here, this this boat's probably about 25, 30, maybe 30 feet long, and you can see maybe halfway down, uh, and it is at 66 feet apparently. Um, yeah, viz wasn't that great that weekend. I think at the at at the platforms down to about 20 feet you probably had about 
five, five feet worth. Um, you know, uh, it was really easy to lose your dive buddy. Um, so keeping a plan and sticking to your plan and finding each other along the lines uh, makes navigation or makes uh, the diving a lot easier. Um, and uh, I don't know if you recall, uh, my dive buddy had a strobe on him, which also made it a lot easier to uh, to find him. I had one as well, so all we had to do is spin around in the 360, and eventually you won't see them, but you'll see the see the strobe light. A lot easier than um, wondering where where they are and than possibly having a surface if you can find them. Anyhow, um, you know, it's the luck of the draw. Uh, I think like a month or maybe just a couple weeks prior to going there, they had like 30 plus feet of visibility at the surface and even better than that. But it was a, uh, you know, perfect storm of the rain, uh, temperature, the water flipped, um, you know, and just run off. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do? It's still a lot of fun to dive, and like I said, even with the visibility. Being what it is, the, the lines help you navigate through the shallow end and get to the, the deeper water where visibility is generally uh, decent, you know, not as good as you see here. Um, here we're, uh, we're in about 60, what is it, 66 feet, I think my dive computer said, uh, working our way towards the shallow end, um, um, I think we do leave the line, um, just because I, I knew from previous dives, uh, which direction I was going to go in to hit the shallow wall um, and on the way we run into a whole bunch of these guys about like four or five foot in length paddlefish this guy scared the hell out of me because um, in the shadows they look like sharks um, so I pulled my light out realizing it's obviously not a shark and I wanted to get some video footage of it uh, and then uh, another one came right at me, much to my surprise. I mean, it's rare if you're lucky enough to see one of these guys, and there just happened to be a whole bunch of them right here. I think there had to have been at least three, maybe four, if not more. Um, this guy couldn't decide which way he wanted to go. Uh, really cool, though. Um, this red blob you're seeing here on the bottom is, uh, is actually the 65 foot platform. Um, I didn't intend on going there but it just kind of drew me in that direction. Um, but I don't know who uses that platform because I've never seen anybody any training there. Uh, here's another fish from maybe one of the other fish circled back. They were really uh, liking this area of the quarry that day. Um, yeah, I get more video of them. I mean, they're just it's awesome to watch do their thing. And from here we head back uh, towards the, again, towards the east shallow end and start to work our way out. Well, anyhow, that's Mermet in a nutshell. Um, if you've got any specific questions, feel free to Ask me in the comments, or uh, most of you probably know me, so ask me when you see me. Cool place to visit in the wintertime. Uh, great staff. The owners are amazing. Uh, check them out, mermetsprings.com. Thanks for watching, guys.